Okay, there we are. Um, so defined as the use of the imagination or original ideas, especially in the production of an artistic work, creativity is a noun that packs a punch. Imagination and ideas live in our minds and from there creativity should spring abundant, right? Um, because there are creative deniers out there and because sometimes um, there are misconceptions about our own creative powers, I'd like for us to refresh our perspective on the subject. So I asked award-winning uh, Patricia Daly Leip. She's an author, artist, globetrotter, biographer, ghostwriter for two of her rescue horses. She's a teacher, master researcher, and she's here to share with us what creativity means to her and walk us through some of her own techniques to unlock it. Thank you so much for visiting, visiting with us again, Patricia. It's all in a name, right? The other Patricia. Ah, they, they <laughs> Thank face. you for <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be part of this and, and it means so much to me to share creativity with others and to inspire. That's the key, to inspire people to express themselves in whatever creative way they choose. I'm so excited about our conversation today. So let's jump right in then. Uh, and won't you share with us, Patricia, what creativity means to you and reassure us that it's something that is discoverable, even if we believe that the gods didn't bless us with creativity. Creativity is the most beautiful aspect that defines humans. And it makes us unique. I have a dog here by my side. And yes, he probably thinks he's creative, but he can't write, he can't paint, but he can share his emotions. <laughs> but the beauty of a being a human is that we can share these things. And Descartes, his definition of the essence of man was, je pense donc je suis, I think, therefore I am. And thinking involves knowing. And what follows is the possibility that knowing does not necessarily need an image. An example is Einstein. It was in a dream that he came up with the theory of relativity. He knew the facts, but it was when he let his mind wander and roam in his sleep that the theory came to the fore. And inspiration, Einstein said, is more important than knowledge. And inspiration comes from the free roaming of the imagination. Etymology can help us enhance our search for the origin of thought. An example is recognize, to re-know, re-connectare, to re-know. Thus, if we recognize something, it's because we already knew it. Mm -hmm. And it comes back. Many words don't have an image. You don't need to be recognizing something that you saw. You could be recognizing something that you felt. These are emotions. And the word create means to bring forth something new as an artistic or intellectual invention. It's what makes us unique as a species, and we should be compelled to listen to the voice within. So sometimes uh, that voice within that we were talking about before can be elusive, kind of like a muse. Some of us might even think that we lack creativity altogether. Well, the creative urge, it doesn't come from a machine. You can't go and buy it. <laughs> you can't go and look at a cell phone and say, oh, there it is. Um, and it's not confined to the artist. It's, it's the beauty of being a human being. It's essential to the scientist as, as well as the artist. And remember, remember Einstein. I mean, that was creativity that allowed him to discover relativity. Inspiration. Imagination and creativity are essential in order to discover something new. You need all of those. And inspiration comes from the free roaming of your imagination. Inspiration, I think, can also be a random flash. Uh, one, one that can strike a custodian or a gardener and a mom and a teacher just as forcefully as it does any musician or painter or, or a writer like like us, I mean, sometimes we tumble backwards with a flash of inspiration that blows us over, right? 
And then it's up to us to recognize it and act on it. That's the word, recognize. <laughs> exactly. So as a writer, let the words take over. And then you may discover something new, something that's hidden inside of you. We don't learn how to write. We learn as we write. Oh Language is active. Language uses us. Do not think you have something to say before you put the words on paper. Let your insights, your visions, your, your ideas happen in the process. It's in the process of writing. That's so you would be, flow. if you, if you, uh, when you're writing, then you would be more of a pantser rather than a plotter. If you're letting inspiration take you over and... <laughs> Giving yourself permission to allow the rules confine. If you have rules and regulations, that's that confines you. You you have to learn to be allow yourself to surprise yourself. To let the and words flow. Yes. Let the words flow. And words and stories have power. And Maya Angelo said, no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. Don't oh. allow that to happen. We all have stories and some of us don't even know until we sit down and allow them to come out in the words that flow. Wholeheartedly agree with that one too. <laughs> we all have the creativity gene and I agree with you that it's not limited to artist types, to writers or musicians. Uh, but just like with all other gifts, we must use it or lose it, I think. Um, except for if our creative gift is unique and elusive, how, how do you recommend that we find it and exercise it? Well, yes, you're right. Creativity, the creative muse lurks within us all. Creativity is the food of the life of the spirit. And every person, each person, unique. You have to love your uniqueness and get to know the real you as creativity flows and take the time to notice each thing so each thing gets noticed. And when it comes to creative writing, there are no rules. Writing comes from the Remember the etymology? The word courage. It comes from the French, which is care, which means heart. And it takes courage to listen to your heart. What is wonderful and exciting about writing is that sometimes something invisible comes to the eye and can express itself. And what you did not know that you knew suddenly appears as the words spill across the page. Yeah. It's a cleansing, a self-enriching experience. Um, as a writer, my creativity is stimulated by lots of things. Sometimes research on a piece will trigger a whole, a whole story, or I might be taking a walk and sights and sounds will direct my thoughts in a particular direction. And I have to pause and write it down on my cell phone. Usually I have a notepad on my cell phone and that's where I'll scribble stuff real quick so, I don't, so that I don't lose that flash of inspiration. Um, do, do you think that, that we have to make a conscious effort to create these opportunities for creativity to, to strike? I think in this day and age, we have to, because we're so surrounded with technology and we need to take the time so each, you know, to notice so that each thing gets noticed. And we have to look, not see, and listen, not just hear smell and, and let the thoughts come as a result. And Toni Morrison said, it's out of what I don't know that I begin to write. And nature, as you said, nature speaks to you and you have to let it, you have to allow it. And then when you sit down and you begin to write, the memories just shape your words and the results may surprise you like they did in this painting that I did, you know? I love this painting. Um, but like the painting, the same thing happens with writing. You know, the words result from what we see and what we hear, what we absorb in our environment. The quality of our imagination is this very flow and we must transcend from a fixed object and allow the mystery to enter our consciousness. And it is the mystery, this inward subconscious level of thought that leads us to use symbols. In the case of the writer, the symbol words. 
Yeah. So it's what we observe is not nature itself, but nature exposed to our method of questioning. Look at my painting. Where did that come from? Yeah. <laughs> they were there. Yeah. Because I had seen these animals. Mm -hmm. And so you didn't plan, you didn't plan no. to, yeah. No, I didn't plan anything. They just came through on their own because they wanted to, I guess. <laughs> you know, somehow they were in the little cubby hole and then I opened it up by allowing the paint to speak to me and whoosh, there they were. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, and the cover of my book, Myth, Magic and Metaphor, the same thing. The picture, the picture on the cover. Yeah. The princess and the unicorn, they weren't planned either. I was doing a plein air painting in Southern France with the extra oil paint on an empty canvas and then I took the canvas with all that extra oil paint all over it, turned it sideways, upside down. And when it was upside down, look who was there. That's the princess. fantastic. That's when fantastic. the unicorn were in the paint, even the unicorn's foot, when you see the cover, the unicorn's foot is in there. I mean, the whole, everything was in the paint, the castle in the distance and the old tree. The only place I cheated was to put the dragon. So it's good and evil. The <laughs> unicorn represents creativity. And the princess doesn't want him to see the evil that's lurking in the woods, mm -hmm. which is the dragon. So she has him look at his reflection in the mirror. But so that's the only place I cheated in this. But the unicorn came on its own. The princess, I had seen the tapestry when I was in France. I'd seen the original tapestry in Avignon. And, and so it was in there. And when I turned the painting, this extra paint sloshed all over this canvas and I turned it upside down. Voila, they were there. There it was. Wonderful. That's what happens when you allow it. You give yourself permission and things happen. Mm -hmm. Just like they did with Einstein, they happen with everyone. It can happen with my husband. Now, would you... Want me to tell you, you about my husband? Uh, no, you haven't told me about your husband. <laughs> well, when, he's a retired physician who also studied engineering briefly before deciding to be a doctor. And we took apart uh, what we called the mare shed. It was an ugly shed out in the field. We have horses. And he took it apart and all these extra boards and everything. And then he decided that our trees needed a pergola on the side of the house. So he took the boards and recreated their shape and size and structure, put paintings, paint on it, set it up and created the most beautiful pergola you've ever seen. And where did it come from? up here in his brain, he saw and he envisioned. It was his creativity coming to the fore. Yes, he had the knowledge about how to use the tools and how to use the paint and how to cut things. But the vision of the pergola was in his mind and he allowed it to come. And if you come to visit us in Florida, you'll see it. It's beautiful. Well, one of these days I might just do that. I think I that, so. I think that what this what this story about your husband says to me is that no matter when we are in our lives creativity can be tapped and applied to any task even the most mundane of things that we do whether i mean i don't know cooking doing laundry raising kids teaching whatever you want you can apply um you, you can tap into your creativity and change things around for for the best that's what I told my students. I said, I'm not here to teach you. I'm here to inspire you to learn. That's the difference. And we'll see the difference in, in a minute. <laughs> It's so, it's so empowering to acknowledge that we can choose creativity, that each new day is an opportunity to look, to look beyond the obvious and approach our actions with a fresh
fresh new perspective. When he was vice president, our current president, Joe Biden said, quote, the arts are bound to inspire imagination and creativity and awaken in scores of young people are yearning and talent many don't know resides inside them. Oh we need to widen our imagination. We need to inspire our children. We need to go beyond the cell phone and computer and go outside. Watch the sunset, listen to the birds, feel the morning dew on the grass. Watch, listen, feel, love. Nobody can advise you and help you. Your creativity is your own. It's a gift of being human and its roots are deep inside the heart. Amen to that for sure. And with that, we wrap up this perspective session. Remember that creativity is a gift and we all have it. We have to pluck it out from our hearts and put it into every action every day if we are to elevate our existence. Um, thank you so much, Patricia, for sharing your wisdom with us. I just love talking these, these types of subjects with you because you're, you have to be the wisest person I know when it comes to art and philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Uh, well, the philosophy is because it's not the who, what, when, and where, it's the why that always appealed to me, and that's why I was a philosophy major. Yeah. But I also wrote a poem a few years ago called A Poetic Meditation, and I'd like to be able to read that because it's very apropos. Excellent. On this earth there is oneness, a rhythmic flow, a great symphony that is life, trees with roots, stems, and leaves. Shells, fins, furs, and wings, all living things. Each has a purpose into each an end, and then a new beginning. Let us recapture the imagination of a child. See once more the mystery, beauty, and joy of God, playing within and behind, beyond and above. Unite with the intimacy of commitment. Trust takes time, but the gift is there waiting. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. That's so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Let's hope that we've inspired those people who are listening, no matter what age, where they are in life, what they're doing with their lives. Creativity is is it's what makes us special as human beings, and we need to recognize that. Yes. Well, um, and, and to leave everyone with one last thought from your brilliant article on the Penn Women's Magazine, do not leave an, un, an untold story inside of you. And I mean, truer words I can't think of, but in any case, thank you. Thank you everyone for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.